after we popped back to the van there, we just popped back for a cup of coffee and just to warm up for a little while. I wanted to show Adam where this waterfall was, so I've brought him back up here. And it's a lovely waterfall close up as well. Now, obviously before I didn't have the time to kind of get close up to it when those ro rainbows were going off, but it would have been so nice to have the time to, to, to get that in the shot as well. But sometimes you have to just grab the shot while you can. You can't always hang around. Would have really been nice as well to be able to slow the shutter speed down for the water in that shot. But I was just more concerned about capturing the overall shot. I just didn't want to miss it. So come back up and I'm just playing around with this waterfall now. There's some lovely light on the hills in the background there. Getting closer up to it, trying different shutter speeds. I've tried it in a landscape orientation as well as portrait as I usually do on every scene. And I think actually this one actually works quite well as a portrait orientation because I've got a rock or a boulder in the foreground here which kind of anchors the bottom half of the uh, image. And then you've got a tree clinging to the side of the waterfall, which should, should be to the right hand of the frame. And there's also where this waterfall's coming, the river's running down the mountain in front of me, and you've got light on the peaks above. So overall, I think it's gonna make a really, really nice shot. But just experimenting with different shutter speeds. I've tried a quarter of a second, fifth of a second, and I'm also taking two different shots. Because I'm focusing on the waterfall and I wanna try and get the right shutter speed, I'm taking a shot for the water and I'm taking a shot for the sky above and then I'll blend them both in post. So moving away from that large waterfall back there, oh hang on a minute, just give it a second. The, um, yeah, I found this smaller waterfall and it's being backlit by the sun. It's absolutely beautiful, it's just coming down off the right hand side with the mountains behind and the mountains are just catching the light as well. You've got the river running through the gorge here, great scene. And I'm probably going to stick to the same sort of shutter speed as I was further up on the larger waterfall. Somewhere around about a third of a second to a fourth of a second. And just try and capture the warm light hitting the water. It just looks great. So I'll try and show you what I've got going on here. I love the way the waterfall over here is being backlit by the sun. It's a really lovely warm glow. I've got to be kind of careful that I don't get in the shadow or cast a shadow on the rocks. You can maybe see that my arm's casting a shadow over there. So I've set myself a two second timer and I just set it off and move out the way as far as I can. But the light is so warm and beautiful on there that I'm trying to capture this backlit, backlit waterfall and the mountains are lit up by the sun as well. It's just absolutely stunning. And if this shot's worked out, I'll pop it up now. What did you think of that light, mate? Oh, that was brilliant. Well, it's still pretty good now, but... Yeah, it is. I think it's, uh, it's kind of skimming it. It's not lighting the mountains as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely, though, on that waterfall, though. It's lighting it up. Well, we... Yeah, I mean... It's about time we got some decent light. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> I don't know. We paid our dues. Yeah, we've got wet. We got soaking for the last few days, so... Yeah. yeah. It's, it's supposed to be... Uh, pouring rain again tomorrow so <laughs> yeah at least we've got something out of today that's the main thing eh well you got your rainbow your rainbow my double rainbows <laughs> double rainbows <laughs> and uh yeah this was beautiful so i'm hopeful yeah I'm yeah hopeful. 
Let's see what tomorrow brings. Yes. What a great evening. Well, good morning. I hope you're all doing well. So we're in the same place as we were yesterday because we just stayed the night in the car park. And it's we were expecting quite heavy rain today and it looks as though it could still do it, but it's flat calm at the minute. And there was a scene just across the road with this lovely waterfall cascading down. And I think it'll make a really nice shot. And what's even better is it's so close to the van, I've literally taken 20 steps across from the van to the top of the bridge here. And you can look down right into this ravine with a waterfall flowing in from the right. And there's still quite a nice, quite a lot of fall color still around on either side and pine trees off in the distance. There's not quite as much water in here today though. It has died down quite a lot. I think with the amount of rain we've had over the last few days, the water levels were really quite high and, and because it's stopped, for, at least for now, the water levels dropped quite a lot. But it's still a really, really lovely scene. So I'm gonna take a few shots. Landscape's not really gonna work in here for me. It's gonna to have to be a portrait orientation and maybe I'm gonna to have to crop it down as well. So what I've done here with this is I've been taking different shutter speed shots again. Because the water, I, the whole scene, I need about a second to make it really, really work. But the water, I want to uh, keep it down to about a third of a second because I still want a bit of detail. And if I leave it at a second, it just turns into a bit of a mush at the back there. And I want it to retain a, a lot more detail than that. So I'm taking one shot for the overall scene, which runs at about a second and another shot for the water, which is about a third of a second. And then I'll blend both in post. I just want to be able to retain more detail in the background there, because that's the main focal point of the, uh, of the image. But I'm gonna grab this shot now, and if it turns out any good, I'll pop it up right now. So we've just walked up a little further into the woods and I noticed on the way back down the path yesterday, there was a few compositions stood out to me and I noticed there was a lot of these boulders throughout this woodland and the, the heather, which is obviously finished blooming now. But I just wanted to try and pick out a couple of these woodland shots. It's really sort of vibrant colors still with the, with the autumn colors through here. And in front of me, what I've got is I've got um, a silver birch which is basically forked it's got a split in the trunk there and it's two different stems going up into the sky behind that there's a boulder and a rock and then the rest of the woodland other than this these this silver birch in front of me is all scots pine and there's lovely textured bark all over the scots pines so what i'm trying to pick out is just basically a letterbox 16 by 9 probably just to kind of simplify it and, and cut out any of the sky above it. I just want this letterbox of the scene in front of me. So I've tried to move around just to get the right sort of angle to make sure that there's not too many of the trees overlapping and, and getting each, in each other's way. And I think I'm just about in that sort of right spot now. It's quite difficult obviously, because they're quite close together. And the other issue I've got through here is it was calm this morning, there wasn't that much wind, but now it's picked up a little more and you're getting periods where there's quite a lot of breeze comes through and makes the, um, the colourful foliage actually move. 
So I think it's just gonna case, be a case of just waiting it out in here for the wind to die down. And when it just drops, just take that shot then. I mean, the light is flat. I mean, it's completely flat. There's barely anything because it's, it's really cloudy out there, but there's breaks in the clouds. So maybe, maybe if we wait it out a little more, there might be enough of a break in the cloud just to shed a little bit more light on the scene. Cause it's, as I say, it's quite flat and lacks any depth because of it. I mean, I can brighten it up, I guess, but it's, it's, I think it's still gonna be too flat to do much with. So I'm just gonna wait it out and see what happens with this light. So as you can see, this is the birch tree that I'm talking about. It's got a lovely sort of fork shape in it and it's got lovely golden medallions still on the tree. And they look absolutely stunning just floating in the air there. It just adds that splash of color to the background. Also in the, in the sort of immediate foreground in the image, you've still got a lot of this heather. And although it's not flowering anymore, it's still got a lot of texture and it looks lovely in the, it's, it, big hummocks of heather. You've also got the Scots pines on either sides of the frame just to add that bit of texture on the bark and everything. Overall, I think it's a really, really nice scene, but we'll see how it turns out. And if the shot does turn out, I'll pop it up now. when the weather was rubbish from the Torridon area yesterday, eh? And... It we've... wasn't rubbish, Paul. Don't be so negative. It was... I'm just a realist, Adam. Interesting. <laughs> it was interesting weather. <laughs> like it is now. Yeah, very, like it is now. Very interesting. And, uh... I mean, it's very windy. It's atmospheric. Is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> 